that makes me wonder, along with what you said about, you know, um, how uh, women often get this, you know, reaction with the with the um, cells um, triggering that response. I'm wondering, um, are there any other insights on things that, that trigger an inflammation response to kind of transfer over? Because when you talk about the immune system, for instance, my first thought is gastritis, right? And how over time, sometimes people don't even know that they have acid reflux and they get all these symptoms like I lost my voice for six months I'd never lost my voice before things like that um and over time obviously that can it degrades things over time um and it can impact everything basically if you don't if you don't know what's going on um and my thought is then the body begins to say oh this over here needs a little bit of inflammation and this over here and um I'm wondering does that transfer to anything that then kind of manifests as a completely different immune response. Can we even kind of track that? Yeah. The immune system is so incredibly complex. And it, you know, it just knocks me down every day when I'm trying to figure out with each patient, one after another, seeing what can happen. Um, We do have a saying in clinic, um, and I think all of the specialties that deal with the immune system are aware of this, and it's autoimmunity begets autoimmunity. Right. So if you have one autoimmune condition, let's take, for example, autoimmune thyroiditis. This is the most common autoimmune condition globally when you have to take thyroid replacement because your thyroid has been attacked by the immune system. Right. Um, As soon as I hear that from a patient, I go, "Uh oh, right. Okay, you've already got one. And then that helps me focus. Okay. Now you're telling me you're having bowel symptoms, right? Again, you're still in neurology clinic, but I'm going to follow what the patient's saying. Okay, what kind of bowel symptoms? Oh, are you having gastritis? Or is very commonly, oh, is food getting stuck when you're trying to swallow it? To me, already, again, my bias as an autoimmune neurologist, is your esophagus swollen? Well, what are the causes of that? Well, Sjogren's syndrome can do that. Eosinophilic esophagitis can do that. Um, some say, you know, some infections play in here too. Some patients will just casually say, oh yeah, I've had an H. pylori infection. To me, I go, why? Not everybody gets an H. pylori infection. Why did you get one? Is is your immune system susceptible? Because the other piece of this is sometimes people who get autoimmune attacks have an immune system that's attacking on one end and not fighting appropriately when it should on the other end, right? So then that leads down a whole other line of questioning, you know, or maybe they say, hey, I have three sinus infections every year without fail. I go, wait, that's not normal. You can get one here and there. And then I say, okay, well, what other infections do you get? You get skin infections, you get this. And then all of a sudden they've come to me for what they think is an inflammatory autoimmune problem. And they they usually have that, but then we're going, why? It's a dysfunctional immune system. The immune system's so incredibly complex. We have many patients where it's it's an attack, an autoimmune attack on their body at the same time that they're frequently getting sick because their immune system is not attacking when it should and it's attacking when it shouldn't. Mm. And sometimes we find genetic causes of this. Increasingly, we have access to genetic testing. We can uncover that. Sometimes we still don't. We're still waiting for the genetics to catch up for some other people. Um, and And we're trying to put all this together to get the answers but also not make the patients wait for the answers. We have to do symptom management while we're figuring out why you, why now, right? Mm. 